Okay, so how good are you with fractions? Well, if you're pretty good with fractions, you should be able to do this problem successfully. But I'm saying here that 75% of you, unfortunately, are going to get this wrong. Now, a lot of you are going to be like, no way, I can do this problem. This is pretty easy. I'm great at fractions. Well, I would say go ahead and give yourself maybe a, a minute. Uh, take you no more than a minute. Don't use a calculator and put your final answer into the comment section. And hopefully you could pr uh, prove me wrong that you're part of this 25% that have mastered this stuff. But you'll see there's a couple of places here that can get uh, students in trouble, okay? But this is stuff that you absolutely need to know if you're at the middle school level uh, or high school level or beyond in terms of mathematics. But we'll go ahead and test your knowledge of fractions here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and uh, high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And if you're struggling or failing in math, please do not give up because I'm telling you right now, every student could be successful in mathematics. But what you need is great math instruction, okay? That's clear, understandable, and most importantly, comprehensive. You need a lot of instruction. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my Math Help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I go into uh, teaching mathematics much more comprehensively than I do on my YouTube videos, and trust me, you will learn mathematics. Also, if you are preparing for any sort of test, with a math section, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning uh, homeschool math courses for middle and high school mathematics. I think you'll be very happy that you did. Hey, do you have a pair of great math notes? If you do not, you need to pick up um, a set of my notes. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. But if you're not taking great math notes, you need to start fixing that immediately. This is one of the secrets of doing great in math. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. Now, before we start the problem, I'm going to give you a bit of a hint, okay? Because I don't want you to be successful. I want you to show me up, and I want to be like, nah, this math teacher, he's, um, you know, he, he's given too easy of a problem. Well, we'll find out here in a second. So here is the problem, but what we have is what? Well, we got various uh, mathematical operations going on here. We have division, we have multiplication, and then we have subtraction, so anytime you have a, a math problem, whether it's fractions or just numbers, it doesn't make a difference, decimals, and you're dealing with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and some sort of combination of all this stuff, or parentheses and powers, well, you need to be thinking about your good old friend PEMDAS, okay? And hopefully you remember this, because this is the order of operations. So here we have these mathematical operations, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and we are going to have to be able to do this problem in a particular order, okay? What is that order? Well, this is what this little uh, PEMDAS tells us, right? So uh, just a little fancy uh, little phrase that goes with this uh, to help you remember. It's, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So if you um, never heard that before, well, hopefully you'll remember this uh, PEMDAS acronym, but it means something, okay? So... Before I tell you exactly what it means, okay, or get into this, I want you to think about this because this is stuff that you should know. If you have studied fractions, then you should already know about PEMDAS. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, just kind of gauge the problem. And let me ask you, what is the first move here? What do we need to do first? Okay, are we going to do the subtraction first? Are we going to do the multiplication first? Are we going to do the division first? Because you know, the, depending on what, you know, we do first, this is going to completely change our answer, okay? If we make the wrong move first, we will get the answer wrong. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through this. Um, go ahead and put in the comment section, what is the first thing we do, okay? What is the first thing we do? All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this. So in PEMDAS, the P stands for parentheses. So if you have something like three times... 10 minus 12 squared, something like that. So the P stands for parentheses. So you want to look for anything that has parentheses that we have to do inside those parentheses. So do we have any parentheses here? No. Okay, so we need to move on. The E stands for exponents or powers. So in this particular example, 
you would go 10 uh, minus 12, so that would be 3 times 10 minus 12, that's negative 2 squared. So then you would square this, okay? The E stands for powers. So do we have any powers? No, we do not. Okay, so now let's go on to this M, okay? So this is multiplication, all right? So uh, there you go, okay? I guess I told you the answer. So do we have any multiplication? Yes, we do. All right, so do we do this first? Okay, I think this might make a lot of sense. So uh, how many of you out there think we should do this first? Go ahead and be honest about it. Put your answer into the comment section. Yes, multiplication is the first thing we need to do because uh, we're following the PEMDAS order here, okay? All right, so let's go and answer this question. If you said M, I must unfortunately give you a nice little uh, sad face. Um, well, maybe I shouldn't have used the word nice, but yes, it is a sad face. That is incorrect, okay? That's an incorrect interpretation of PEMDAS. So again, this is why I'm saying that uh, if you were confused about this, if you said um, multiplication, you might be able to do the fraction work, okay, but you had the order wrong. So let's clarify this right now. So the way this PEMDAS works is it's M and D and A and S. So you're going from left to right, and whatever you see first um, from left to right is the way we're gonna look at this. So, so PEMDAS, this M and D are tied, okay? So if you see the multiplication before division, because multiplication comes first before left to right, then we would do multiplication. But if we happen to see division before uh, multiplication from left to right, then we gotta do the division first, okay? So it's whatever you see first from left to right. Now, hopefully, that's kind of like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Well, yes, that's an, uh, an area of confusion for a lot of students. So the M and D doesn't mean you're always, always going to do the M first. It could be the D and the M, okay? Same thing right here for addition and subtraction. It could be addition and subtraction or subtraction or addition, whatever you see first from left to right. So now that I've kind of drilled that point home, hopefully. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our operations. We have subtraction division and multiplication. So what do we see first from left to right? Multiplication or division? It's division, so this is the winner. And if you knew this right here, well then I must give you a nice little happy face and multiple, matter of fact, I'll just give you an A plus for that. I'm not gonna give you 100% because you haven't answered the question yet, but if you knew this, that's excellent stuff. Okay, so now let's go ahead and continue the problem because this is a typical place where a lot of students will have you know made an error. Now, if you got confused and you answer this, but like, oh, okay, now I understand it's this, and you want to pause the video to do the rest of this problem, go ahead and do so. But I'm gonna go ahead and get into the rest of the solution now. All right, so now we have negative three-fourths minus one-fifth divided by two-thirds. So what do we need to do? Well, I have to do the division of these two fractions. So it's the division of what? A positive one-fifth and two-thirds? No. We have to consider this sign. This is a negative one-fifth. So the easiest way to look at this problem is to turn this subtraction sign into a plus negative, okay? That's the way I'm going to recommend. Uh, so you can just kind of, you know, not be confused by what's going on. So here we have the fraction negative three-fourth plus this fraction, negative one-fifth, divided by two-thirds. So this is what we have to do right here. You got to uh, consider that sign, that negative sign. All right, so now let's talk about how do we divide fractions. So I'm not going to, um, you know, of course I'm going to explain this, but if you need additional help on fractions and all this stuff, check, definitely check out like my pre-algebra course or my math foundations course uh, that'll get you going in the right direction. I also have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on fractions, but let's go ahead and continue on with the problem. So negative one-fifths divided by two-thirds. How do we divide fractions? Well, well what we're going to do is change this division into multiplication by flipping this fraction to the right. So instead of two-thirds, we have three halves, and now we have a multiplication problem. Okay, so continuing on. So how do we multiply fractions? You're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So negative one times three is a negative three, and five times two is 10. So this is the answer. This is our first step, okay? So the result of, of taking our first step with PEMDAS is negative three tenths. So now we have this problem. We have negative three fourths plus negative three tenths 
times negative one half. So if you got up to this point, boy, I tell you, that's pretty good. I'll have to give you two check marks. And a matter of fact, uh, it's so important to show your work in mathematics for your teacher because you, let's say you made a mistake and you got the wrong answer, but you were able to get up to this point, a teacher might very well give you like half credit uh, for your work, right? That's why it's so critical for you to show your work just for so many different reasons. So another little good tip from a math teacher Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to do next. So we have addition and multiplication. So what is the next operation? So when you're thinking about PEMDAS, all right, hopefully it's pretty clear that multiplication and division, we have to take care of any multiplication and division before we get into addition and subtraction. So we're going to have to do this next. Okay, so here we go. Negative 3 tenths times negative 1 half. So how do we... Multiply fractions, well, I just showed you there. It's the numerators times the denominators. So we have a negative fraction times a negative. So negative times negative is going to be positive. So 3 times 1 is 3. 10 times 2 is 20. Okay, so here we go. We're up to negative 3 fourths plus 3 over 20. So if you're at this point and you're with me and you have this all right without my assistance so far, that's excellent. Okay, so now what we need to do is to add these fractions. So... Uh, you got to be able to add fractions. Of course, I'm testing you on your overall fraction abilities. So let's go ahead and get into it now. So when you're adding fractions, remember, you need to have the same denominator. So here we do not. So it's going to be a good idea for us to find the lowest common denominator. Now, I teach a fraction hack. It's like a, one of my top videos on YouTube. It has like uh, well over a million uh, views. It's an excellent technique. However, um, it's probably one of the, my favorite techniques to use in mathematics. However, you still need to be able to find uh, the LCD of fractions. In this case, the fraction hack would be uh, not the most efficient way to do this problem because if you recognize that the lowest common denominator between these two fractions is 20, all we need to do is fix up this fraction right here such that its denominator is 20. Okay, so how can I make this 4 into a 20? Very easy. I just multiply that 4 by 5, right? 5 times 4, that gives me 20. And uh, by doing that, though, I have to multiply the numerator by 5 as well. So again, basic fraction stuff. If you need more help with fractions, I've already given you recommendations on where to go. So here's one thing that I want to highlight as well. So if you see a fraction like negative 3 over 4, like this, so some of you might be wondering, where does that negative sign go? Well, uh, I'm going to um, tell you that you want to associate that negative sign with the numerator. Okay, So negative 3 fourths as a fraction, you go ahead and think of it as negative 3 over 4. Okay, That's the best way to think of this because it will um, help you not be confused when you're adding and subtracting fractions with positive and negative numbers. So let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so uh, 5 times 4 is, of course, 20. 5 times this negative 3 is going to be a negative 15. Remember, instead of this negative 3 fourths right here, negative and then 3 fourths, I'm associating that negative sign with the numerator. So it's clear to me that it's a negative 15 over 20 plus 3 over 20. That's our other fraction right here. So now we have the same denominator. So we have a po uh, uh, same denominator. We're trying to add, so how do we add fractions with the same denominators? Well, we simply just add the numerator. So that's negative 15 plus 3, that's negative 12, okay? Of course, you need to know your positive and negative numbers. Again, this is all foundational kind of math stuff, um, things that you can find in my pre-algebra course or my math foundations course. So now we have negative 12 over 20, okay? So we're pretty much done, but would you leave your answer like this? No, no, no. Do not leave your answers like this in terms of your fractions, um, your final answers with fractions. You want to be very aware. You always, always want to simplify and reduce your final answer. So that would be uh, negative 12 over 20. We could reduce down to negative 3 fifths. 4 goes into 12, 3, and 4 goes into 20, 5. And of course, we have a negative fraction. So this is your final answer. Okay, if you got this right 100% and you didn't need any hint, if you didn't know, if you knew all the order of operations and everything, you just did this problem perfectly, well, I must give you a nice little uh, happy face in A++. Matter of fact, I'm going to do, give you something extra special here. I'm going to give you a good old 1985 Mohawk haircut, a 100% multiple stars. Matter of fact, um, 
If you were in my class, I would just say, you know what, take the rest of the year off. I'll send you your report card. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're watching that guy on YouTube, but that's very impressive, just like this haircut was way back in the good old days. But uh, anyways, a nice job, okay? This is a you know pretty good confirmation that uh, you know what you're doing with fractions. Of course, it could be much more challenging problems with fractions, but if you understood this, not only did you show me that you uh, are pretty good with fractions and positive and negative numbers, but you also knew the order of operations. So hopefully... You weren't in this 75% that uh, made an error. But if you were, well, listen, I'm pretty sure the next time around you would get this right. Okay, so if this little video helps you out, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. Again, if you need help with fractions, I have a ton of stuff on my YouTube channel. And you can check out my courses in my math help program, specifically pre-algebra and my math foundations course. But uh, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.